This is going to make you a better designer. And especially if you're talking to someone who knows their sh if you're talking to a designer who's worked at these big tech companies, they will laugh at you if you come to them and say, I could have designed that in two days. One of the most popular things to do as a designer is to sort of sh on what Apple does every year. Meaning, you know, when Apple comes out with something new, like, you know, iOS 14 or some of the new things they came out with uh, WWDC this year, designers love to go to the internet and, and jump on Twitter and say, oh, Apple's boring now. Apple's not innovative anymore. Android did this before, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And when I see designers doing this, when I see especially like UX and UI designers doing this, I'm a bit embarrassed for them because what they're doing is just jumping on the bandwagon because they know people will like those types of tweets and they know their like colleagues will like hearing that kind of stuff because it's like, oh, Apple suck, all of this kind of stuff. But what it shows me as someone who hires designers, as someone who's been running a design business for over a decade, is that these people don't really have a good idea of how businesses work and how tech companies work and how design actually fits into these tech companies. Good example is, um, you, you probably saw WWDC, but one of the things that Apple launched was these widgets here. So I'm, I'm on the iOS 14 homepage here, it's, uh, and it just shows you some of the big new things that came out in iOS 14. 14. And yeah, one of the biggest things was widgets. So I assume you've seen WWDC. If you're not, if you didn't see it, then I suggest you, I mean, it's a good idea for designers in general to look at these Apple conferences. But if you haven't seen it, basically one of the biggest uh, features is that you can now add um, widgets to the home screen. And I saw a lot of designers saying, oh, okay, Android's been able to do this for a hundred years or Android's or Android did this before the dinosaurs existed. Now, when I see something like this, I'm not seeing, oh, Apple added widgets. They could have, of course, added widgets five years ago. This is not something to do with their ability of their design team to add widgets or not. I'm sure this concept could have been created years and years ago. It's just that Apple thinks very carefully about complicating the user interface that everyone is used to. So, you know, Apple is always worried about how the bigger picture of this integration works. If you see at the start of the page, it says, looks brand new, feels like home. You have to understand Apple is not willing just to scrap their entire interface and replace it with crazy experiments in the way that Android does. And I'm not saying that Android is a bad thing. I'm just saying the Android users, the type of people who use Android are more used to sort of wild experiments in the UI. Whereas Apple is about this feeling of stability. Now, this is still not the point I'm trying to make with this video. The point I'm trying to make is when you see Apple doing something like this, something that you may think is very, very simple, this goes through a long, massive, serious processes and strategy sessions within a company like Apple of when do we roll something like this out. A company like Apple isn't just figuring out two months ago, oh, let's just copy Android. A company like Apple is building these roadmaps years in advance and thinking about when is the right time to roll this out? When do we have things in place where it makes sense to roll something like this out? And the other thing is, there are priorities. There are things that have higher priority than doing something like this, right? So for example, maybe doing app snippets or maybe getting AR kit right was a higher priority for them last year. So they didn't do something like widgets and then widgets was higher on the priority list this year. Apple doesn't just you know, isn't just playing catch up with the with all of these other companies. They're thinking about why and how exactly all of this works together. And they're very careful not to mess with a very successful user experience. I think also people don't realize the amount of effort Apple puts in to the tiny, tiny, tiny details. And a lot of people think they've lost that. But if you actually watch this, uh, there's a great video that one of my employees sent me. This video just made me have so much respect for the team at Apple who worked on this. Okay, this is the uh, developer conference page, uh, WWDC page for the design of the iPad OS pointer. And if you want to see the amount of effort and detail that Apple goes into, to figure out a detail like the pointer in the new iPad OS. This video is, you know, almost 40 minutes of amazing nerdy detail 
on how one tiny piece of the interface works. And I think what it does is it gives you a good idea of the absolute crazy, crazy amount of thought and effort that goes into something small at a company like Apple. Now, this isn't a video, I, I, I mean, to be honest, yes, I use Apple products, but I don't really care so much. I'm not like, you know, Android versus Apple or whatever. But what I do think is that when a designer comes to me and says, oh, did you see the boring stuff that they released at WWDC? And I know they haven't seen stuff like this where I'm like, yeah, but do you know how long it takes to actually change something in the world's most popular operating system? Do you have any idea of how companies work? It just gives me this feeling that these people don't know what it's like to work at companies like this. Now, how do I know what it's like to work at companies like this? Well, because my company consults other tech companies, not Apple for very, just to make it super clear, we, we haven't worked with Apple. Not that we'd be able to say if we did, don't, don't kill us Apple. But we consult companies like this. We help them with some of their design work and we know it can take years and years and years for a big company to roll out something small. For example, and again, just to be super clear, I'm not saying we worked on this. I'm just saying, for example, Twitter, you know, they spent a very long time working on how to do update their replies, something that they've rolled out in the last uh, two months. Of course, you as a designer or, or you as someone who maybe works for startups, maybe you, know, you could say, I could have done that in two days, right? If a designer says to me, that I could have redesigned that in two days. Why did it take them two years? It just shows me that they don't know what it's like working at these companies, right? There's a lot of stuff that you need to understand. There's politics, there's priorities, there's you know loads of stuff happening all the time. And especially if you're working on a big, big, big famous product that gets used by millions, sometimes billions of people, you really have to be careful when you make a change. I remember when the new emotions came out for Facebook and the XTN and Lax guy put out an article which said they spent years working on it. I was like, oh my God, like how the hell can Facebook spend so much money on a team that works like for years on just changing these icons? And now I understand why. Now I understand that these things have a really big impact on the product. So. What I just wanna say with this video is the next time one of your designer friends comes to you and says, did you see that boring Apple thing? Or, or for example, you know, when the next iPhone comes out and everyone's saying it's just the same as the last year's one, instead of jumping on the bandwagon and just being critical just because it's cool, why don't you take the stance of the person who notices the small improvements, who notices the business reasons behind these design decisions. This is going to make you a better designer. And especially if you're talking to someone who knows their sh if you're talking to a designer who's worked at these big tech companies, they will laugh at you if you come to them and say, I could have designed that in two days. They will realize that you don't know what it's like to work in these companies. So I think, of course, you and me and all of my employees here at AJ and Smart could have designed the Apple widget concept in one week, sure, but that doesn't matter. That's not how it works. So really the next time you see a WWDC, rather than posting on Twitter or on Facebook that, you know, Apple is boring, why not post this cool example of how Apple's design team puts so much effort into something as small as the pointer? This is one of the most amazing design videos I found in a long time. I really love this video, this design for the iPad OS pointer. Anyway, that's all I wanna say. If you're watching this channel, if you like this channel, I get, um, we've been getting a lot more views since we went more in the nerdy design direction. Make sure you join our newsletter down below every week. We post cool stuff like this video, this iPad video, for example. We post like 10 cool nerdy links every week uh, to your email address. And also, I guess links for everything you see in this video will be down below. And that's it, thank you so much. Leave a comment, leave a like. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe, that really helps the YouTube algorithm find us. All right, thank you, bye. Everyone, Jonathan here from AJ and Smart and, <clears throat> nah, I don't like that intro. Now, by the way, there's like a building site outside and it's too warm to close. Actually, I should probably close the windows. Let me just do that. <laughs>